Uh, Thank you. We still have a motion on the floor. Siobhan, your hand is up. I just, I just want to say, Michael, you need to have your select board send a letter to yeah. Jerry and the board appointing, officially appointing. I just want to make sure you knew that. I do know that. And to me as I, clerk, I do know please. that. I brought it yeah, up clerk, to the select yes. board. Uh, sorry. Um, so I do know that that I, I uh, brought this up with our select board at their meeting last night, and at their next meeting two weeks from last night, they will officially appoint John Reed. Excellent. Thank you. Back to the motion on the on the floor to approve the minutes of the prior meeting, and they have been seconded by Siobhan. Motion by Jeremy Matt. Are we ready to vote on this then? Are there any any opposed to the motion? Any abstentions? Hearing none, motion passes. Thank you very much. Uh, let's let's move on to uh, our treasurer's report. Lori Beth, are you here with us? Uh, doesn't look like Lori Beth is on one with us. I know she sent out information earlier today. Okay, well, let's come back to that. Um, if Lori Beth joins us or if she finds the mic, I'm not sure what what the uh, what the issue might be. Okay. David, do you know where Lori is by any chance? Where, had, she, had she mentioned to you that she wasn't going to be available? No, she did not, uh, Jerry. I can't. I can't give an explanation. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right then. Um, let's move on to our construction materials operations uh, updates. And Janiel, I'll hand that over to you to walk through those um, as you see fit, please. Sure. Um, Good evening, everyone. Uh, first of all, I want to mention that we had a very successful full 2023. This is our first board meeting of the year, and we built over 200 miles, and we lit about 60 customers. The last number I saw was 59, and there were 14 in the in the queue to install this week. So a huge congrats to our construction and operations progress for our first construction season. We are still going strong, even though it's winter. We are down a few crews, and that's because we have limited make ready. Ready, ready. Um, we, we, we will be able to pick up as the uh, as the um, funding becomes available for Marshfield as the weather gets warmer, but also as we get more green licenses in um, in Calis in the Hardwick Electric uh, region, we'll be able to open up. Um, some crews that are already in the field. Uh, we, we are still working closely with Hardwick to open those up. Uh, I would like to pass this pass over to this Lucas over. to elaborate, to elaborate, elaborate a bit on construction materials and warehousing and operations as well. Yes, like Janiel said, we got a lot done in uh, our latest DA already, which has kind of uh, caused a uh, slowdown now that we don't, you know, we don't have the green licenses anymore. Um, you know, the latest numbers we have, which which are going to be a little bit dated, is we've placed 115 miles of fiber, and we have passed nearly 1,600 service points. So, you know, we have a wide range out there right now for potential to bring on that, which is going to be exciting. Um, probably more of uh, operations, I guess, but we are going to be very close to lighting up the cabinets for the, uh, the RS-1 and RSO-2 DAs. So that's going to be another big big piece of the pie that we can bring on net um, and get a lot more folks online. Um, and Julie, I think the latest number I saw this morning for uh, Lent customers before, which is probably, it's probably changed, it changed by end of day. So probably add on another few to that. So it's, uh, you know, those are starting to climb really fast. Um, and from what I hear, we have a lot in the queue in the next little while. So that should keep growing. Yeah, they just keep they just keep going for us. We got two new drops crews, so we we are going strong. Waitsfield is really pulling through for us. They have been an incredible partner 
for us. Um, I also want to take this moment to mention a rate. We had initially, a, a, we had expected a take rate of about 42% after a three year period. We now already have a 39% take rate in Calis 01 and a 34% take rate in Calis 02. Unheard of. We, we haven't even opened Calis 02. So it, it's amazing. It's more than we ever imagined. David Healy. David, you're on mute. So, Lucas, when do you think we can open up RSO1? So, RSO1, um, we have all the testing done there. So, we're literally just trying to light the cabinet right now, get it turned up, um, which is just in the hands of our uh, uh, NRTC right now to get Waitsfield the information they need so they know how to carry out the, uh, carry out the box. So I would expect that to come through, could be any day. Um, could be any day. I know it's in the hands of their quality quality control folks. So all they have to do is give it the blessing and they can pass it on. And Lucas, the status of the uh, backup generator? Yes. So the backup generator did not happen this last Monday as we had scheduled. Uh, Brookfield had lost some people and the scheduling kind of fell through the cracks, I guess. So I was in contact with them last night and again today. Um, we're tentatively shooting for next Tuesday. Um, we're coordinating with, coordinating with Gillespie Fuels right now to make sure they can attend. If they give the green light on that, then we're going to do it next Tuesday. Uh, we also have next Wednesday and Thursday available um, to get that done. So hopefully next week will be the week. Yeah, that's great. So we're we're doing heavy planning in in for the quarter for quarter one. The warehouse is open two days a week, so it's a limited warehouse schedule for kitting out and for accepting deliveries. Um, but that's working out just fine for us with the, with the rate we expect. And we we did this we did this based on based on the education we learned last year as well. Um, and um, so we're we're going to be focusing mostly on let's get RSO one and RSO two lit, and then let's continue installing. So the the next three months are going to be about install install, install, and Waitsfield is right on board with that. Siobhan? Do we have any sort of event or anything planned for when RSO1 goes up? So, yeah, Olivia, you want to? I can, I can answer that one. Um, so as of right now, we are actually um, intentionally staggering our public-facing communications just so that Waitsfield can, in fact, catch up regarding installations, they're working as fast as we can, but um, we do have site surveys also. Again, the more publicity, the more installs we have on our wait list. So um, the, the series or the cadence of communications right now is that we do have a press release ready to go for CLO2. So that will be lined up hopefully in the next week. week, week. Um, we have an event in Duxbury, which is separate, um, but again, it's public facing more so on the brand awareness. And as soon as the numbers kind of die down on our wait list for CLO1 and CLO2, then we will move on to a public facing event for RSO1 and RSO2. So yes, but again, intentionally staggering at this point. And to touch on materials, um, we we have all the materials we need. There were a few things that we realized that we like metal risers, and so we're and so we're so we're, we we have been working closely with Gray Bar, uh, trusted um, supplier, to bring us the materials that we still need. And then there are, of course, the consumables that we don't know how many we're going to need until we're in the field. So we we're getting these lists as we go from from the crews, from warehousing, and uh, and. Uh, for the most part, we have 400 miles minus some of the things that we um, still need as we learn it and as we continue to see on the ground that, um, that we, need, we need something in particular. So the materials are in excellent shape. David Healy? You're on mute, David. Do we have a cabinet from Marshfield? Oh. Yes, we I, do. Thanks. We have everything we need from our field. We're going to chew that up after we see the materials for the cabinet go out for a new school. Um, we'll count jumpers, the G-pons, stuff like that, line, side optics. Great, great. Thank you. David Mannix. Hey, Janiel. Uh, on materials, where do we stand with the outstanding invoices from uh, 2023 in terms of payment? Is, is that buttoned up for last year? 
everything that yes, we've we've buttoned up everything that we've been invoiced for. Um, we've paid everything that has been delivered. Um, as far as I know, there's NAMS still outstanding. Um, there might have been some long lead items, but that but that's not going to be delivered until this year. So okay. that will, for from an accounting yeah. standpoint, I know what you're asking about. You're asking just to close out the books, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, and I think you mean those anchors, Janiel, that were long lead times, and I believe those have all been delivered now as well, as okay. of probably November. Um, okay. So I, I think we're in really good shape there. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and David, we're really on, really on top of top of our materials invoices. As soon as they come in, we do pay Fantastic. them. Fantastic. Thank yeah. you. Great update. Thanks. <clears throat> hey, if I might add to that, though, David, on that thought, we uh, we do have. Uh, a considerable lag, even though it's been getting better in construction invoices. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have a tally that we maintain of how much how much construction work has been performed. We haven't yet been invo invoiced invoiced for. Right. We keep a tally. We keep a tally of that. Right. Uh, be because they're they're uh, they're quite tardy in their uh, in their billing. Thank you, Jerry. Yeah, that's by yeah. far the that's by far the um, outstanding obligation, the largest outstanding obligation from 2023. Janelle, you want to keep going with? Uh, well, it sounds like you did a lot of the operations, but if there's additional operations discussion you want to bring up um, here, I, 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 marketing. I, well, I feel well, I feel I feel good about that. Yeah, unless Lucas wants to add something to any of um, the the uh, operations, construction, or materials and warehousing. Um, but I was thinking that might be a good time to jump back. I tell Lori Beth, I noticed she she came yep. on. But but first, I want to make sure that I'm not. I think Lucas had to step away. But um, yeah, why don't we why don't we then go to why don't we then go to Lori Beth if if that's okay with you? Or actually, let's sure. let's make sure make sure it's okay with Lori Beth. Lori Beth. Lori Beth. <laughs> yeah. No. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But but before we close the loop on the materials warehousing. Um, construction and operations. Lucas, is there anything that you'd like to add that we haven't covered yet? I think we're pretty well covered. Hopefully uh, good updates to come next meeting when, you know, hopefully we have that cabinet up and ready to go. Excellent. L Lori, Beth, we uh, we couldn't find you on the screen, so we bypassed the treasurer's report, uh, but we did see that you had sent, had sent, out, sent out information. So we were hoping you would join us. Welcome. Uh, could Thank you, you. please? Could you please uh, provide the treasurer's report at this time? Okay, we did We did finally get all of the information. I was able to go over it all um, for the month of November. And uh, there's a balance sheet in the front showing you what the assets and liabilities are at this point um, and what the bank balance is. And then there's also a uh, profit and, profit and loss, loss for just November. It shows you what was what was brought in and what went out for the month of November. And then there's a profit and loss that is a comparison um, for the year to date for uh, November. And it, it looks at the various um, income and expenses as to what this was year to date as well next to what part of it was November. Um, there's also, there's, also, there's also a profit and loss by class, which shows which one of the various um, brackets that we've spent money in on the various funds. And it shows you where it was spent down through um, for the uh, month of November alone. And then there is also one that shows the month of number with the profit um, with the year to date figures in it. And there's also, at least I think there, think there is, there is where to go. Um, there was also a sheet attached that showed the um, <coughs> list of the vendors and what was spent for the various vendors during the month of November. Um, and as usual, the last one is just a reflection of the catch up on the payroll, money going in, money going out each month. That last line just kind of evolves every single month. Lori Beth, let me, let me ask you ask you a question. I know we had talked about, and David, you can you can uh, maybe chime in on this as well, David Mannix. We had talked about presenting uh, expenditures 
uh, against the budget so that we can track as, as, we, as we move through the year, we can track where our expenditures are compared to what we had budgeted. Is, is that something that we can expect to see at the uh, uh, February meeting or might it be the March meeting? What, it, it, first of all, am I correct in what yep. I just described? And two, yep. yes. when do yes. you think we'll see that? Yeah, Jerry, I, if, I, if I could, <clears throat> uh, Laurie Beth, real quick, I, I did uh, trade some emails with Bonnie this morning. Great progress on loading the 24 plan into QuickBooks, and she's she actually has that done. And I validated the numbers this afternoon. They they tie to the approved numbers by category, category that were presented to the board, and we will expect to see. Um, let's see, in February, January's results. Uh, but we do plan on sharing the the, the 2024 plan uh, in in that meeting, so you can actually see what that looks like right. for, for the for the year. Right. So we'll we'll have a couple of updates for you. We'll finish out the year of 2023 at our next meeting, and then we'll also okay, share what that 2024 plan, plan looks like going forward. <clears throat> that yes. that that sounds great. I have two hands up. I have Linda and David Healy. Go ahead, Linda. Uh, Laurie Beth, are you sharing the the documents, financial documents, someplace on the shared drive? Um, I have not. I can. That would be wonderful. I would like that. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, they were also emailed. I think yesterday was it, Laurie Beth? You emailed that out to everyone. Uh, yesterday, yesterday, just before I had to had to leave. leave. So yes, and um, okay. I got back this afternoon. So I but I wanted to get it out at least before this meeting. So that's why I emailed it to everybody that I could think of that is on this list. But oh, I can okay. I can um, automatically put it on the shared drive if that would be helpful. That that would be great to have a, a running a running list of treasurer's reports. That would be perfect. David, go ahead, sir. Yeah, you have a button problem this evening, this evening, this evening, David. <laughs> you told me to turn it off. No. Um, David, are we good? <laughs> Going to see a, a comparison with the 23 budget to expenditures? Uh, let's see. I, I don't know. Um, we don't have prior year in the report that she has, but it's not like we couldn't do that if it's something you want to see. What you're going to get out of the box is, is current month compared to current month's plan and then year to date versus year to date plan. We don't have prior year in. Or in, or in. We what, can, what exactly are you looking for with prior year? What are your thoughts on that, David? Well, I'd be curious of how close we came to the budget. Okay, um, I think I just, if you don't mind, David, yeah. um, knowing what comes out of QuickBooks, we can do that. Um, the only catch is that 22 uh, definitely did not have all the information. So 22 right. is not, but going into 24, we can do a comparison to 2023 as three as well. And that's something I can do on a monthly basis. Oh, good. Thank you, Lori. So we'll, we'll take that as a to-do then. Yes. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Janelle, I think I'll pass it over to you for the marketing update and the delegate survey, whatever may be left from what Olivia had already presented. Yeah, actually, I, I'd like to be able to um, speak to the, the market, marketing and to the delegate survey. So, as you may recall, we sent over our year-end update in December, and we we actually had really good results. We are deciding on sending our next uh, update to our entire subscriber email list probably in April. Uh, we will have measurable metrics to share publicly regarding installation rates. We'll probably be at a really good spot with CLO1 and CNN CLO2, CLO and then RSO1 and RSO2 uh, not too far behind. So the next email update will likely be issued in April. Um, in terms of installation communications, we've been uh, connecting with Waitsfield's customer service team in terms of the cadence for getting those installations up and running. So as of right now, uh, it's three tries essentially. So um, there's a call and an email that is considered attempt number one, um, followed by attempt two and three to follow, 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 and then they essentially go down, uh, down the list in order to get those scheduled on a weekly basis. Uh, we are considering uh, adding in a fourth attempt 
where we would be sending an email kind of as a, a final call. We really want to get people up and running as quickly as possible and making sure that they don't go back to the list, essentially. We understand some folks are seasonal, some folks don't answer phone calls, so the email approach might be better. Um, so we are really trying to, to find fine tuning to the communications process um, for installations. In terms of board recruitment, uh, we have a post on our news page on our website. Uh, we are recruiting for 2024. We have a couple of vacancies for, uh, for delegate seats. So if you are interested and you have anyone who is uh, interested in joining, um, that would be great. Uh, please refer them to us. There is a process in terms of getting appointed by, appointed by, your, by your select board. However, if anyone is interested or curious, please send them our way. And as I mentioned, uh, we do an event in Duxbury. Uh, Duxbury's Have Your Say Day event is scheduled for this Saturday, January 13th from 9 a.m. to noon. So we will be making an appearance there. Um, it is simply awareness at this point, um, but we are we are more than happy to join uh, Henry at the event um, to show a friendly face and a Duxbury map, map, map with, all, with all of the locations that will be served by CV Fiber. So we're really helping to help inform and expand our awareness um, for that event itself. And then I will move over to our survey. Um, our delegate survey is, I understand it, you know, it's I think nine or 10 questions, but I have been filtering through all of the responses. They really help inform me in terms of your thoughts, your feedback, your skill sets, your bios, bios um, how we can start putting all the puzzle pieces. We have a wealth of information within this group itself, and I'm really trying to determine for the new year how we can maximize our skill sets and make sure that we're integrating everyone's feedback in terms of our strategy and an approach moving forward. So if you have some spare time and you haven't responded, please um, just click on that link. And if you don't have that link, I could forward it your way as well. So um, that is on the survey. And the last that I have is, is legis legislative day is coming up January 31st. Um, and that is being done in, in conjunction with Vicuda. Um, they are spearheading and on our end, we will be attending um, if you would like to attend, I can certainly send that information as well. Um, we are now aggregating a couple of testimonials to uh, help present in terms of our expansive uh, imprint, in terms of educational opportunities, work opportunities, that sort, of, that sort of thing. So we're really hoping that this will be an event to help spread awareness and show our positive impact and all the work that we've done thus far. Um, along with our sister CUDs. Excellent. Thank you. RD, I see your hand is up. Go ahead, sir. Hi, Jerry. Uh, thank you, Olivia. Do we have any legislative priorities? Um, I can speak to that. Uh, we do. We do. So, 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 uh, part of the Budget Adjustment Act is returning twenty million dollars to broadband that was reallocated to flood relief over the summer, and it looks like it's getting favorable reviews. Um, we've submitted support letters um, through Vicuda and in favor of that. Um, and I, 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 I wrote to our representative over the weekend to make sure that he's on board with it. Um, and it looks like it's going to be reallocated re back to um, broadband. But in addition to that, we are working on aligning our, we're working on aligning our interests with some of the already hot topic items that includes housing. So housing is a hot item right now. So we're looking to get, um, to, to be recognized as an essential piece of housing uh, because you, you can't really have you can't really have housing without good high-speed internet. So we're looking to attack the other hot items, items rather than rather than trying to say, "Hey, look, we're here and um, we're important." By saying we're an essential, we're an essential utility that that piggybacks with these other things that are already on your radar. Um, so that is, that's just a couple things. Um, we also we also are looking at ways to increase affordability within the state of Vermont, working through policies with the broadband board. Um, with the federal um, subsidies are at risk 
uh, right now. So we're looking at ways to create a state version of, of, of the ACP program and uh, other sorts of programs that will make internet more affordable while also recognizing the the business model that is the CUD and the necessity of the long-term sustainability of the CUD, weighing that against affordable internet for all. So th these are th these are hot policy items that we're working on. Uh, when I meet with my legislator, um, is there anything particular CB fiber fiber would like would like me to punch up in our conversation? Um, um, please, um, do, um, please do I, share. I, I represent. I represent a flood impacted town. I'm not sure where my um, where my loyalties are going to fall with respect to that reallocation. Um, but it, it, with respect to um, other priorities, um, do you have anything to recommend that I um, I highlight when I meet with my legislator? Yeah, yeah, yeah yes. Um, I would. I I would. I would emphasize the reallocation of the 20 million that was originally allocated to to broadband and then taken away in order for flood relief and is now looking to be put back in because that was already earmarked for broadband. So that's an easier sell. Plus it already it looks like it's likely to be returned. Um, and, and then in addition to that, I, I would focus on the, 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 the just that, just that, just that the CUD model works really well, um, and, and to emphasize the work that you've seen, the progress that you've seen with CV Fiber as a, a delegate, I think is an important piece to remind remind the legislators that the CUD model is a successful model. Thank you, Alan. I see your hand is up. Go ahead, please. And you're on mute, Alan. Sorry about that. I pulled a date. Um, I, I think I saw an article in the Washington Post this week that the FCC commissioner was before Congress arguing that the ACP program needs to be um, uh, uh, readopted. Is that, I, I, I didn't realize, is the AC, ACP program in danger of losing federal funds at this point? Yes, Alan. The ACP program is is on is on a sunset, and it's sunsetting this summer. Uh, so, so we don't know if it will be uh, if it will be continued after that point. Regardless of if it is or is not, we believe that Vermont should take a stand for affordable internet, and that we can work together as a state to provide affordability support to all Vermonters, whether that's a similar similar to an ACP program or whether that's some sort of a relief or um, 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 there are many possible ways to address this. But on a statewide level, we, we think it's important. Yes, the federal program is at risk. Great. Thank you. Uh, RD, your hand is up. I think that may be residual. I'm, I'm not sure. Do you want to add to the conversation again? Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, let's uh, segue into a funding ding, ding update. Uh, first of all, we had a meeting uh, in executive session with the VCBB, uh, with the board. That was yesterday. Uh, Janiel did a, an excellent job in, in presenting and fielding questions and making uh, making our case to the VCBB that the CUD model is a successful model and that uh, uh, CD, CD Fiber is successful. Uh, nonetheless, uh, we have a, a, a grant with no contingency. We've had costs that escalate. And we, um, as, we, as we have presented before and explained again yesterday to the VCBB, uh, there simply aren't enough funds in our grant to connect all of the addresses in our grant application because those were basically done in 2021 dollars and it's now 2024 and the money just simply doesn't stretch as far. The VCBB understands that now um, and they understand it better than they did previously. Um, we will be back to them in February 
uh, presenting again. And uh, our intention for all of this is to not lose the, the residual that they're holding. They're holding 10 percent. Um, that is basically a, a completion payment. And we aren't going to be able to complete with the funds that are in the grant. So we're, we are hoping to be able to get that money forward so that we can continue the construction that we are ready to do. Um, or you know, another option, option may simply be that when we do those uh, DAs with borrowed funds that we would get the grant money at that time when they actually are completed, even though it's not with grant money. All of this is up in the air. Um, nonetheless, this is stuff that we have built into our planning. So this is this is this is uh, not something that has surprised us. Uh, we've been talking about the gap since it's, 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 I don't know if it's been a year. It might be. Um, so that so that's part of our funding update. The other update is that today is the closure of the time period for requests for proposals for our um, potential loan vehicles through PFM, our fiduciary. Um, the last time I checked my email, I think we had at least two pretty solid responses. Uh, but uh, but a, lot, a lot of that happens at the eleventh hour, so there 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 may be others, um, and certainly we're in no position to evaluate those yet. Um, but it's 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 an update that we have gotten responses, um, and we're looking forward to evaluating those and and moving forward um, with with our lending and borrowing process. Uh, this was also part of the discussion yesterday with the VCBB. Um, I, th I think I think Janil made the very important and very good point that we we always knew that grant funding wouldn't be sufficient to build all of CV fiber, unfortunately. Uh, so the 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 question was how much do we borrow and when do we need to borrow it? Uh, bead is still not fully formed, and it it still appears that the appropriate the the appropriate planning for bead funding 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 is going to be 2025 to actually have funds to use uh, at this point in time. Now there's a lot of work as David started our meeting today by saying bead is critically important and it's going to take uh, an effort on every uh, CUD's part and the VCBB's part to get our fair share of those funds, um, but that. That the, the money itself won't be until until farther into the future, the future, future, and we're planning um, accordingly. Janil, do you want to make any other comment on what's transpired in the past couple of days? Yeah, there's a lot. The um, the bead funding was allocated to the state of Vermont to the amount of two hundred and twenty nine million dollars. So. Now we have the tough job, Vermont has the tough job of figuring out who gets that money, the sub-recipients, and that's where it's a competitive process, process that includes a requirement for a match uh, of at least 25%. So just if CV Fiber wants, say, ex by way of example, 16 million, we would have to match 4 million um, in built assets and or some combination of um, other um, money. So, so this is a highly competitive process that is still being worked out. And BEAD has an element of accessibility, equity, and affordability. That's a big part of why they, why they, why, why it exists. And so uh, the affordability aspect of our of our product is really important. The accessibility of it is very important as we start to compete. Um, so we're not losing sight of those things as we start to plan for the bead funds. Even though it's going to come in 2025, that planning starts now. Those uh, those challenges to the address list is going to start, we think, as early as 115. So we started a lot, lot, lot. We've started a lot of the work already, um, and there's a lot of work to be done. Siobhan. I just wanted to know, do we have an idea of, I mean, I'm sure we've got an idea of how much built assets we've got now yeah. and how much we hope to have by then? 
Well, we have a very good idea of of how much built we know exactly <laughs> to the dollar uh, how much how much built assets we have, and we 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 also uh, it's not just assets, but also in kind services that we've provided. So uh, you know, I don't know if you would consider the design an asset or the design and in kind service, but we have. We, we have some combination of assets and in-kind services that will go towards our match. Um, we're not exactly sure how that's going to play play out yet. The, the, the rules have not been stated clearly and definitively as far as we know uh, at the moment. And let me add one, one, more, one more thing that, that um, maybe is, it, I think it's obvious to those of us that are doing this all the time, but um, BEAT is open to everyone. This isn't CUDs competing against CUDs. This is bead is open to commercial carriers as well. So it's a uh, it's an open competition, and you know we 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 simply don't know how it's that going is to uh, 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 play out. But of course, we will uh, try to put our best foot forward. Jeremy Hansen, go ahead, sir. So uh, who, who at the state of Vermont actually makes that determination, you know, as we're going up against the consolidated, you know, FIDIUM, whatever, or TDS, or uh, I'm not so concerned about the other CUDs, who actually does, is it the VCBB that gets to make that decision about who are the subrecipients then? It looks like that's going to be the process, most likely. VCBB is putting together, other or, or has put, started putting together the criteria and um, the volume of criteria that are going to be um, considered. Um, so the VCBB has to be careful that they don't favor the CUD model, right? So they have to be um, relatively unbiased. Well, they have to be unbiased in in their review, um, and and in putting together the the criteria. The CUDs are pushing to have criteria that favor the CUD model, whereas CUD has to be careful in even in even adopt, adopting the criteria to make sure that the criteria itself is fair. Because all of this gets evaluated at the federal level, and I can't remember the acronym for the telecommunication infrastructure. NTIA. Uh, I, I, yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm losing the acronym, and, and the gentleman that is actually uh, he's a Rhode, he's a Rhode Islander. He's a Vermonter, um, mm -hmm. who was who was with the uh, tele telecommunication in Vermont, and now he is he is the gentleman that is um, helping make those decisions at the federal level. So everything has to be done to appease the federal criteria. Tom Fisher, I see your hand. Go ahead, sir. Yeah. Um, so I had a quick question about. Ardoff funds. I'd seen in the news headlines how Starlink had gotten theirs revoked, and there was others who likely um, who had also been inflating billions. billions. And so there was something. There was something. There was something like two point eight out of the nine point something billion that is now in limbo. Um, do you have? Do we, does anybody have any idea of what may or may not happen with that? Is it potential that that money could eventually get reallocated, or is that just gone? Well, so there's a, there's a couple of things here in in the uh, CD fiber territory where there are a number of art off winners. Um, and one of the, this is extremely interesting, the ARPA money that we're spending, spending right, in right now, the Act 71 money ignores art off. And we're actually building, have built in art off areas where the art off winner hasn't, hasn't moved forward with construction. So we got there first, it was always in our plan and we built. Art off, areas regardless of who the ardoff winner or recipient is the they can that's outside of bead you can't spend bead funding in an ardoff area so that that is um a, a little bit problematic for the cuds because they 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 have to make their they have to make their presentation for an ardoff area for a, a bead area a potential funding area that moves around the art off areas that are out there that may may have been won by others. So I don't know directly, Tom, about what happens, what happens if, money, if money gets freed up, if it can be reallocated to the CUDs. I have really don't know about that, but we have all of these layers of rules that we 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 need to uh, we need to match 
um, achieve those criteria so that we can move forward with uh, especially the bead money as it comes down the pike. I, I apologize for not having the best answer for you there. Um, uh, Linda, go ahead, please. So do we have a specialist uh, helping us with all this grant uh, requirements? Um, in, in, indeed, we do. Um, and we, we, we went through a competitive process to find someone that, was, that would help us. And this was back when we, when we were looking to go for reconnect. Um, and when we did the back of the envelope math, we realized that we were not going to be competitive with reconnect. So we um, stopped moving forward with that. Um, but those folks are a branch of NRTC that that could be activated if we need them. We have PFM who are also specialists in this area. And we also, we also, also have Vicuda who is helping in this area. And we also have VCBB who is trying to be a clearinghouse for uh, the information, um, for potential grant funding information and potentially with their own contractor. Janelle, do you have more information on that? Yeah, I, I, just that we are, that, that we're working closely with Vicuda toward um, how we can work together to get a, a bead specialist. We are, we are, we are working with, um, with uh, we actually hired Vicuda has hired um, someone who's helping us guide us through some of that process. Yeah, so Linda, there's no intention of going at this alone um, because this is a specialized area. We recognize that, and there are subject matter experts we need to bring on board. Uh, I would like to segue finance manager. manager, manager contract if, unless anybody wants to continue talking about our funding so i'm i'm going to give a, a brief description then i'm going to make a motion and we can have lots of discussion if we need to um the the finance manager is um kind of the third leg of the stool that we we felt was necessary last year in, in building our budget and, and, looking, and looking at the organization chart and trying to understand what professional assistance CV Fiber needs on a regular basis to move forward. Um, and it was, it was uh, decided that we needed a finance manager and we weren't sure if it was a, we didn't think it was a full-time job, uh, so the the concept of finance manager wasn't necessarily an individual uh, that would be hired. It could be could be a be a, a, a firm that would have a contract to provide these services. We we kind of left it fluid so that we could go either way. And we've had the finance committee um, working working on this, and we had a working group that has been looking at this, and at the last executive committee meeting there was a motion that was passed to uh, make a recommendation to the governing, governing board so allow allow me, allow me please to make this motion and then i'll open it up to discussion uh, whereas cv fibers 2024 budget includes funding for the finance manager position whereas cv fiber advertised the position and received numer numerous inquiries Whereas CV Fiber authorized a working group to review and evaluate applicants, and the working group has selected a preferred candidate uh, that provide the necessary service services within the budget allocation. Whereas the executive committee approved the motion to recommend to the governing board to execute a scope of work with the preferred candidate, Batchelder, and associates, I move that. The, the governing board execute the scope of work with the preferred candidate, Batchelder and Associates. Second. Second. That was Jeremy Matt on the second. second. And, and uh, we, we spent a lot of time and effort. There's, there's a, a lot of, uh, of full-time equivalents went into uh, figuring out how to do this and, and what our best uh, 
position might be in this. Jeremy, go ahead. Would you mind pasting that in the chat so I can uh, snag it for the minutes, please? Uh, yeah, I'll I'll email it to you um, as soon as we're as soon as we're done. Soon as it's actually the same motion that was in the uh, minutes, which is where I read it from, with the addition of the last sentence. Um, any other discussion? All right then. Uh, are there any opposed to the motion? Are there any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion passes. Thank, thank you, thank you very much. This is a, this is an important step for us. Um, I, I I really look forward to working with Batchelder on this. Linda, please go ahead. When does she start? <laughs> Tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I will sign. I, I will execute the contract as soon as this meeting is over. She's late. Thank you. Um, Janiel, uh, 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 since we've, we've moved through that, can we uh, talk about the uh, human resources delegate training before we get to the revised personnel policy? Yeah, so this board um, agreed, uh, adopted the recommendations of the HR group, and that is in part to provide HR training, human resources training, to the board as a whole, and then also to managers and um, and leadership personnel with fiber. So, so, so we are looking at two different trainings. One is a management targeted training that will be an in-person half day training in Barrie um, toward the end of February and um, leadership, including chairs, vice chairs, and um, personnel staff of CV Fiber will be attending that training. Um, we'll go through things such as creative uh, ways to run meetings when it feels included, ways, ways to deal with bullying and harassment complaints um, within the workplace, within people who are working with you. Um, and then, so that's the first, that's that's one training. And then the second training is going to be everyone on this, or every board member will be invited to, to participate in the board-wide human resources training. And that will include, that will include all of the state and federal required trainings um, for, for folks who work within a, basically it's, it's like employee training. And I asked our consultant how long they thought it would take. And they thought it probably would only take 45 minutes to an hour. Um, so it's, it'll be all online. It'll be a teams, uh, a teams uh, meeting at some point, probably in, probably next month or perhaps in March, but uh, but this first quarter we'll get that training out and we'll do it, we'll record it, and then it will be available to every person who joins as a member or a non-management level, level employee or staff um, going forward. And then we'll reassess this every year. So just to make sure that the qualifications and requirements are still up to par. We also decided to include a broader training within that board training. So what is CV5 about? What are our highlights? What are some um, key things that we want people to know? What does it mean to be a CV Fiber board member? So we might we might double the length of the, of the training. We might make it, a, make, it a, make it a couple hour training so that we can provide board information for what it means to be part of CV Fiber <clears throat> practically, structurally, um, and answer some of your questions, and then also include the human resources component as we're, as, as we're recommended to do by our human resources council. So those are the two separate trainings that you can anticipate seeing coming through as an invitation um, the board members as a team teams meeting, meeting um, to be held to be held uh, most likely the end of February or the beginning of March and then for management personnel and uh, and leadership roles within CV fiber that half day training that'll take place um, in Barry at the end of February. Thank you, Janiel. Um, additional discussion on our oh, training? training. All right then. Um, Alan, I'm going to uh, turn this over to you to talk about our revised personnel policy. Um, I just want to note that the executive committee 
um, approved the recommendation that this per revised personnel policy come to the governing board for final approval. So this has been through uh, this week's executive committee committee committee. Um, and I'll hand it over to Alan. Go ahead, please, sir. Yeah, thanks. I, I'll try not to say too much because we only have five minutes for this item and you might have a lot of questions. I did send out uh, annotated copies of the original, the current uh, personnel policy, which the board approved back in July uh, of last year, 2023, and an annotated copy of the revised uh, personnel policy that the policy committee has been working, working, working on since uh, September, actually and has gotten a lot of help uh, from Janiel and from our legal counsel. Almost every revision that we've made has been at the suggestion uh, or the very strong recommendation from legal counsel that we need to uh, have the policy uh, constructed that way. So there are a lot of changes and I'm sure you've noticed even things have shifted about after sure. that. But it really, it really is, really is a much more complete and understandable document, I think, now than what we had back in July. If you remember, we did uh, pass a couple of sections, and I mentioned that in the cover note I sent out uh, that we've already approved, and we don't have to worry about those. But if anybody would like to ask any questions about any part of the revised policy, now's the time to do it. Otherwise, I'm going to make a motion that we approve this. In fact, let me make that motion now, 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 Jerry, just so I have it. I'll move that the governing board approve adoption of the revised CV fiber personnel policy. Second. Seconded by Siobhan. Thank you. Um, I do see David Mannix has his hand up for you, Alan. I don't know if you can see all the hands. Yeah. Hey, hey, Alan, we talked at the, the uh, last meeting about documenting the training requirements for this policy on an ongoing manner. Was that going to be yep. added to the document? Where are we going to document training, training, training requirements? We're going to document that in a series of rules that will follow with the adoption of the uh, of the policy, because that that really is more an operational thing than it is a policy uh, thing at this point. Okay, as long as it's documented, that's fine by me. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, David. Uh, are there other questions for Alan? I don't see, I don't see any, any hands. Oh, nope, there's a hand. Chuck Burt, go Chuck. Um, I would just like to call attention uh, for the broader board to a conversation that occurred at the executive committee uh, about this policy. Um, and that is that uh, if you read through the details on it, you would see that there is no paid parental leave in this current policy. Um, and uh, apparently uh, in committee that was discussed uh, a fair amount. And while we all, I think, believe, believe we want to be able to do it, the situation is that financially, uh, we just don't believe we are able to do it just yet. Um, I'd be happy to turn the floor over to somebody who is part of that conversation if they'd rather uh, articulate it but I did want to bring that up for the broader board just so everybody's aware that that conversation was also had at an executive committee. Janiel, your, your hand, go ahead, please. Yeah, so I, I wanted to speak to that, Chuck. Um, it, it is important to see the CV fiber to have um, a work environment that is pro family. Um, and so what we had, what, what, what we did is I reached out to our insurance company and we're, and I asked them for quotes on um, long and short term disability, as well as life insurance policies. So we're hoping that we can fill the gap um, in that way. Uh, I, I, we're awaiting quotes. We've provided them the information they need to provide us quotes. Thank you for the clarification. Additional discussion. Janiel, your hand's still up, but I think that's just a residual. So, all right, let's uh, let's do a vote. Are there any opposed to the motion? Any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion passes. Alan, Alan. you and the, the crew, the crew that worked on this. Thank you so much. You're quite welcome. It was a lot of work, but it's worthwhile. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Okay. So let's uh, let's move on to this officer election business. 
uh, we've 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 gotten uh, some emails and we know that there are two folks that are interested in the chair we've we've heard from and we have heard from 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 Linda that they are interested uh, allow me to ask is there anyone else here that would like to be considered by the governing board to stand as their chair Okay, so now I'm going to ask a procedural question because it was not clear to me. Do we need a motion that nominates candidates in order to have a vote? That's a question. Uh, Jeremy Hansen, maybe your experience here. Al and I had sent you an email, but I don't think you saw it. Um, it's not clear to me if we need a motion or not for a nomination. You're, you're muted, Alan, or I can take this, whichever. Yeah, you're muted, Alan. We can't hear what you're saying. Okay, you I got you now. Can I just, you should be able to hear me now. now Worcester isn't that far away. Worcester isn't that far away. Come on. We're like XX1 district out here. Um, I, I had a question. How can we proceed if we don't have if we don't have a vacancy in that position, you you haven't you haven't turned in a resignation, have you, Jerry? I, I will as soon as there's 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 as as soon as we finish this, you know, have a vote, and you know that would that's that's what I would do. <clears throat> okay. My intention was to not leave was was to not leave a uh, a gap without having a a vote. But you, you, I'm, 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 I'm open to what the appropriate procedures are. Jeremy, perhaps you can help us here. So uh, the procedure would be: you would have to step down first. It would be okay, and it would, and it would, and it would be procedurally probably wise for you to conduct the election as sort of the chair pro tem while the chair is being elected. The, <clears throat> often it's the vice chair that steps up to do that. Um, to replace a chair that is absent, but given that you are a chair stepping down, you would have to declare yourself no longer chair and formally, formally, yeah, formally step down. And then you would call for nominations. Nominations can anyone, anyone, anyone cast a vote on the board, on the board. <clears throat> nominations do not have to be seconded. Once all the nominations have been put out there, then you can conduct the process where whereby people can vote. And that can happen in several different ways if we're abiding by Robert's rules. Um, I don't remember, I don't think we have any sort of different processes in our procedures to um, change how nominations and elections work. So R Robert's rules would have nominations followed by um, any number of different, way, different ways, that the ways that the voting could go. We can do it by voice vote. We, uh, roll call vote is probably the cleanest. Uh, you could do it by secret ballot if folks choose if they want to do that instead, which may require a little bit more um, logistics. But I could probably whip something up together if that ends up being the desired approach. Um, but yeah, that should be. I think that covers most of the basis. Okay, one more one more thing before I go to a question, uh, Jeremy. If if I were to step down now at this moment. Would we be able to proceed tonight? Yes, yes. You would okay. be the. You could just act as the chair pro tem, the ch the chair for the moment, for the time, and conduct the election until a new chair was elected. Should, for whatever reason, the meeting was canceled because everybody on the roof, everybody's internet internet dies, dies, the chair at that moment would by Robert's rules would fall to the vice chair temporarily until the election could be properly conducted. Okie doke. Linda, go ahead, please, and then we'll go to Alan. Do the candidates get a chance to speak after being nominated? The pleasure of the body. Alan, go ahead, sir. I just wanted to read this one sentence, 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 and it's in the uh, state statute about officers. It's uh, section 3067. It says, upon the death, disability, resignation, 
or removal of the chair or vice chair, the board shall forthwith elect a successor to such vacant office until the next annual meeting. So one of the things we want to remember is that this term is for a relatively short period of time because our next annual meeting is in May. Right, Jeremy? It's May, not yet. Yeah. Yep, it's in May. Yep. Uh, Siobhan, Siobhan, go ahead, go ahead, please. So this brings up the next question. If Jerry, there are still things that Jerry wants to see through to the end, like the funding RFP that's up in the air right now. And we were kind of hoping that Jerry would be able to go through February. Does that mean that that couldn't, Jerry wouldn't be, be able to do that? We can't. Um, I don't, I don't, Jer Jerry's a pretty cool guy. He can do a lot of things. So um, <laughs> we, you can delegate him the ability to do anything. I mean, the board would have to do that or the, ch or the chair or whomever would have to assign that personally. But once Jerry steps down, he is, he is in fact no longer the chair and you, there's right. not really. But I am a delegate. I'll, I'll still be a delegate. Yes. You're, Jerry, you're also a member of the uh, finance committee as well, right? Uh, yeah, I ex officio or if I'm or if I'm, if I'm, or if I'm a voting member, but I I I, I tend to show up pretty regularly. <laughs> so, Jeremy, what would his status be on the finance committee if he resigns as chair? If he's a member of the finance committee ex officio, he is not a member of the finance committee because he's not in that office anymore. He could be. We could add an item to the agenda now to sort of clean that up. I don't think that would be controversial to sort of. Re Rejuggle the membership. Okay, if Jerry just, were, you know, want to serve on another on another committee on committee as a delegate rather than as the chair. Right, right. Sorry for all of this uh, confusion. Um, I see Alan and R D. Go ahead, Alan. You're on mute. Oh no, he's frozen. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Yeah. So the mute's residual, and so is the raised hand. <laughs> well played, well played. RD, go ahead, go ahead, sir. sir. Uh, Jerry, it seems as though we're we're unprepared to conduct this election. Is there a reason? Uh, is there any urgency um, to uh, elect a new chair at this meeting, or could we postpone that until February and rely on the executive committee to um, to put together a uh, an election? electoral procedure you know that may be a that may be a good a good move yep. um i mean there is there is an urgency but i also anticipated that there i i anticipated a transitionary period especially with the uh with you know being in the middle of of working out the uh, the our loan interests with uh, PFM, I figured that I would continue that one way or another because I'm just, you know, neck deep into it. Um, well, that's, I, I apologize. I, I, I tend, to, tend to have things more settled when I bring them to a, a public meeting. So I, I do apologize. Um, I can, I can go either way. I, uh, I, I do need the additional time. Um, but we if could, I may we, we could put it off until February if if that's if, if if the board prefers that. But we have a whole list of people here: um, Henry, and then Jeremy, and then Siobhan. Jeremy, Matt. Yeah, I mean, do we, we have all the delegates here? I mean, do we even have a quorum? I I, uh, I think it should probably be a ballot. Uh, sent to the delegates or something. It shouldn't just be done by, you know, whoever showed up at the meeting. Uh, well, it was on the agenda, so that's why um, we do have, have a quorum. Um, Jeremy, Matt, nobody's left that I that I know of other than um, Michael. So I believe we still have. A, uh, a quorum. So we have Jeremy, Matt, and then Siobhan, and then we'll go back to Jeremy Hansen. Yeah, so the last I checked, we have exactly 11 members, which is exactly a quorum. So, um, I mean, I don't know. I, 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 it, it seems like it's a warned item, so, and we've never voted for chair by anything other than 
you know, some sort of a, you know, in a, in a meeting. It's not like a ballot sent out to, to people. Um, but what I really raised my hand for, Jerry, was I did check the Finance Committee membership and uh, you are on the web page. So you're official, if it makes any difference. Yeah. No, that, that, that's fine. That I, I knew I was, yeah, but sure. I wasn't changed um, um, when, I, when I became chair. Uh, Siobhan, the website Jeremy is Hansen. God, so that <laughs> we're going to go with that. <laughs> I knew he was. <laughs> so uh, just a couple of points here. One, I'm going to be gone the first week in February because I've got my retirement vacation scheduled. I've had it scheduled for six months now. Um, and so this was a, an unanticipated thing that this election would come up. However, the reason Jerry is, Jerry, is, Jerry is stepping down is because he's burning both can the candle at all, all ends. And so Jerry is rare to go, willing to serve, and will serve. But I think we need to take into account that he announced in December to the full board that was at the meeting that he wanted to step down. He warned it for January for this meeting. It was on the warning. We have always our elections like this. We have always been as unprepared for the procedures as we are right now. <laughs> and I would really rather we didn't have an election while I'm out. So that, you know, and Jerry can continue the work. Jerry can still do all of that work. He just wouldn't be having the extra duties of having to do the minutes or having to do the, the what's that called? Agenda. And things like that. I don't see any reason why we really especially need to wait because Jerry, it, it, I feel like it's a burden, unfair burden on Jerry when he's already given us plenty of warning and that this is it, it, gratitude for service and we need to give him some relief and we need to be there for him as well. And I'll hush now. Thank you, Siobhan. So there's Jeremy, RD, and then Linda. Go ahead, Jeremy Hansen. Sure. sure. Um, so, Rob, so Robert's, Robert's, Robert's rules doesn't really allow for balloting of the entire body when it's not in a meeting. So the you're right, Siobhan. We are we're here. I'm not part of the of the uh, of the, the meeting. I'm not a voting member right at present. But the 11 folks that are here constitute a quorum and are therefore acting as the body. So. This is, there are several different ways that you can't, we can get together. We don't necessarily have to follow exactly Robert's exactly. rules, but we can't, can't do can't it, do it outside of the meeting. It has to be done in a public space where we have public scrutiny and has to be done. Should Jerry step down, it has to be done now. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm still good with doing it now. RD Eno, go ahead, please. Thank you, um, Jerry. Um, Jeremy, can you put together a Google form for voting this evening, uh, so that um, so that we can conduct a secret ballot? And uh, if so, if so, so will it take time? Do we have other agenda items uh, that we can uh, take up before voting? Sounded like Chuck volunteered himself that he could put something together in a Google form, which is not you know oh, not sorry, ideal I or, or secure, but. Right. I'm sorry. I, I I do see it was Chuck in the in the chat. Uh, can that be can that be done? And if so, should we take up other any other agenda item items items before moving on to voting? Uh, I'll jump in here, Jerry, if you don't mind. That absolutely can no, be please. done and probably take me about five minutes. So, uh, frankly, I think we should give the people interested some time to talk about why they're interested and what, what their motivations are. And and I can absolutely uh, uh, whip that together while they're doing that. Excellent, excellent idea. RD, Chuck, thank you. That I think that's I think that's gonna work for us. So Chuck, if you would do that, hopefully, if he, if, is, that, is that something you would email to everyone and they would be able to quickly respond or how, or would it be in I the chat? I can put the link right here in the chat. Okay, fantastic. Um, you know, we'll just have to watch it because uh, we'll have to kind of manually error check that somebody who's not officially part of quorum or voting 
uh, tries to submit a vote or something like that. Um, and and so you know there there are definitely some considerations of going down this path, uh, but it is very fast and easy. Um, I will also just 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 uh, uh, pose the question while I'm here. Um, do we still maintain a quorum with a, with 11 members if two of them have to recuse themselves because they are running? No, that they don't have to recuse themselves. They don't okay. have to recuse themselves. No, okay, they are voting you. members of the board. They are they, they can recuse <laughs> themselves if they choose, but they probably shouldn't. OK, so that would be a working quorum um, um, with no one recusing, choosing, choosing themselves. Okay. So uh, all right. I go for it, Chuck. Jeremy, uh, is that, Jeremy, Matt, your turn. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing as Chuck, and I see some things in Teams that um, it would be best to send it to the board members, and I, and I agree with that. That you know, rather than put a link, um, it would be better to send it out directly to the voting members. Um, yep, and I, I can, if if it would be helpful, Chuck, I could. Um, well, actually, why do you put why do you put the forum together? together? And I will send out an email to the voting members that you can then reply to because I can get that from the attendance on the sheet. Okay. Sound good? That, right. that sounds fine. Um, and I'll use that same list, to send them teams. Excellent. So, how about if Chuck, you said you can do that in five minutes, what if we give you six and we give three minutes to? Each of our does it, does that sound that sound reasonable reasonable to folks? All right. Uh, I don't. Linda, I don't oh, think. Wait, we, Tom, I don't, Tom I don't think we should be limited to three minutes. I don't think we should be limited to three minutes, Jerry. Three and a half minutes, then. I'm sorry, uh, Tom Fisher. Go ahead, Jerry. You raised your hand. We still need to. We still need to nominate people. Oh, we do. Okay. Well, that's uh, that would be that would be the uh, uh, first first step, wouldn't it, Jeremy? No, your no. your your stepping down from chair would be the first step. Nominating people okay. would, be the, would be the second. <laughs> okay, got it. So I'm going to take from uh, David Healy. Put his hand back down. Okay. So then um, I am stepping down as of seven seventeen this evening. So we can move forward with a vote. Do we have, do we have any nominations? David Healy, your hand is up. Go ahead. You're on mute. Thank you. I'd like to nominate Linda Gravel to become the new chair of the uh, the board. Very good. Is there a second? Second's not required. Second's not required. All the better. <clears throat> okay. Any other nominations? Jeremy, Matt, I see your hand is up. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I know uh, Siobhan's interested, so I'd like to nominate Siobhan uh, for chair of the board. Okay, excellent. So we have a nomination for Siobhan. We have a nomination for Linda, who does not want to see a time limit. Um, so, Linda, why don't you um, try to keep it brief and then we'll we'll ask Siobhan to speak and by then I think Chuck will have everything ready and, and I, will, I will go on mute. Go ahead Linda. Thank you Jerry. Um, I have asked Chuck to put up my uh, presentation and I'm going to close down my video because I'm having internet issues with uploading. Uh, everyone pretty much knows me, I think, Linda Gravel. I am the Waterbury Delegate. I am also the Vice Chair of Operations Committee, the Vice Chair, Vice Chair of Communications Committee, and the Vice Chair of the Finance Committee. Last Saturday, I sent out a resume. If you didn't get it, I sent it again this afternoon. It's probably going to your CV Fiber email. Over the past week, I contacted the members of CB, CB Fiber who I've been working very closely with over the past two and a half years. Those who really know me, I invited the members of the executive committee and the staff, staff, staff to, to do one-on-one -on -one Zoom meetings to discuss three questions and a survey. 10 people accepted my invitation. The questions I asked are, what are the duties of the chair? 
what skills are needed to be an effective chair? And how do you perceive <coughs> Linda's skills for the job? So here, here is what the, what the, the CB Fiber membership and the staff told me. The top qualities of the CB Fiber chair, and I gave them eight to select from, were communications, delegation, and accountability. The top personal attributes they want to see in the chair, and I gave them eight to, to select from, Reliable, active listener, and trustworthy. The top personal attributes in Linda that they chose were reliable, active listener, and intelligent. The next thing I did is I looked at leadership qualities on the internet, especially in regards to aggressive or assertive. The attributes that I found that were most identified and were reliable, reliable, confident, intelligent, and trustworthy. The attributes identified as assertive were confident, in, in, insistent, decisive, and forceful. The top attributes that the survey came up with that identified for me was Confident, insistent, and decisive. It is important for me to understand the expectations of the chair. It is important for me to understand how people perceive me as a leader or as their chair. My strategy, if elected as chair, is to actively listen to our leadership, to define the vision and strategy, and to delegate the implementation to the staff. I am asking for your vote and support for the CD Fiber and the Governing Board. Thank you. Did I get under three minutes? <laughs> you did good. Perfect. You, you, you must have practiced that. You were spot on three minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Very well done. Uh, Siobhan? Um, would you like to, would you like to take some time? Sure. Okay, I, I, have, I don't I don't have a presentation. I wasn't expecting to need a presentation. Um, I am. I've been on this board since 2018. I sent out an email earlier, a few days ago, about that. Um, I've been on. Originally, I was on all the committees, um, but I pared that back because it was conflicting with work. I'm retiring now and looking for more challenges. Um, I, I uh, yeah. tend to work on trying to build consensus rather than trying to focus on what I think is right. I'm willing to be mistaken. I'm willing to have a reasoned argument change my mind. Um, I'm a... Uh, actually a pretty good listener most of the time. Uh, I'm a little bit nervous because I don't do, do this, hear this very often. Um, I have, you can probably count on two hands the number of meetings of anything in this related to this that I've missed in the last five years. I, uh, I am here for this organization and I will be here. I, uh, I guess I just wasn't expecting such a to have to say much about myself. I guess I'm not really used to that. Uh, I I worked closely with the staff as vice chair. Uh, I helped write the personnel policy. Um, I've been I've run several of the meetings. Uh, as vice chair, I've been vice chair for since Jeremy was chair. Um, I understand, the, you know, you know as, much, as much as your usual person understands the uh, public meeting laws. And uh, I have a pretty good idea how to run the meetings most of the time. Um, and 
I just want us to graduate from a completely volunteer led organization into a staff run organization where the board advises and guides and gives, us gives us policies and direction, 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 but the staff are empowered to do their jobs because they're the professional experts that have been hired to do their jobs. Um, I guess that's all I've got to say. Thanks. Thank you, Siobhan. That, that was well said. Thank you. Uh, Tom Fisher, you have your hand up, sir. Go ahead. Yeah, I was wondering if I could ask a quick question of both um, in that if you were to um, not win, win the chair, chair, would either of you be willing to serve as vice? Both of you. Whoever wants to go first. Yes, I'm, I'm willing to serve as vice. I, I am not. I am not being nominated. And I will not accept the nomination for vice chair. So we got a positive response from Siobhan, a, a negative response on that, on that from, from Linda. Uh, Tom, is that did that get to your question? Sounds like it did. Yep. OK. David Mannix, go ahead, sir. Uh, I'm afraid you're on mute, David. Try again. Jucks. Would you both uh, resign your vice chair positions on committees? Would those become vacant that we would need to fill? Or how, how are you thinking about your response to other committees? I will probably still be attending all the committees just as I am now. So um, if people feel that I should uh, resign vice chair of these committees and we can find others to step up, I would certainly do that. I'm not currently vice chair on any committees. Okay, thank you. I want to know Jeremy Hansen wrote, wrote, wrote that he has major network issues and he wants to offer comments. Oh, please, please do, Jeremy. Are you, are you doing this in the chat then? Should we be looking at the chat? Um, maybe, maybe I can um, I can connect. I was in the process of calling in, but maybe my network will be up low. Oh, uh, it you seem to have dropped. Spotty. Yeah, it's spotty, Jeremy. Yeah. If you want to send a chat, maybe uh, Janiel can read it for you or something like that. I think he said he was going to try to call in. Try again, Jeremy, because I can see you moving. I, I'm going to get a sentence through. I'm going to get I'm caught up. I'm going to type it in chat. OK, Jeremy, thank you. Um, so, Jeremy, Matt, we'll go to you, but let's give Jeremy Hansen just a second to finish his his chat, and then we can we can do that. Janiel, could, could, would you do me the favor of reading Jeremy Hansen's chat to all of us? Yes, I will. When it comes through, I'll read it. Fantastic. Thank you. Maybe, maybe if, he, if he turns off his video, he will have better network connection. My my Starlink is literally dropping in and out. So here, all right, so am I connected long enough? I'll just read this. So I'll say, if I was a voting member, I would vote tonight. <laughs> classic, classic, <laughs> not <laughs> a thing. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly why we need CV fiber, right? Yeah, exactly. that's, why, that's why the FCC got rid of Starlink. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Indeed. Jeremy says, if I was a voting member, I would vote tonight for Siobhan. I asked her to serve as vice chair and could definitely see her as a valuable continuity from where we started in 2018. I hope I hope support her. I Point have taken. some endorsements also. If you're t allowing endorsements, I have an endorsement also. Sure. 
Janiel, would you like to read it? Yes. I think it was sent to you. It was sent to me. Christopher Shank supports Linda, Gra Linda Gravel as chair of this governing board. Very good. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, David Healy, go ahead, sir. Yeah, I, I'm supporting Linda for a lot of reasons. I mean, one of them is she's so intimate with what's the ongoing functions of CV Fiber. And this is sort of a critical year for understanding. It's sort of a transitional year from going from the board to a managed, um, you know, staff run organization. And there's you know, a lot of details that take a long time for somebody who hasn't been intimate, intimate, intimate with them to catch up. And Linda does know all of it. That's why I'm voting for her. <clears throat> Thank you, David. Jeremy Matt, your hand is up. Uh, so I didn't get a chance to weigh in much ahead of time about, you know, what I see in a uh, in a candidate, but some things that I see as being very important are being able to keep meetings on track, not get sidetracked down to the weeds um, and to keep meetings on track in a way that doesn't. Um, that that's not offensive to people to, to say like, OK, we need to move on now. I think Jerry does a really, really good job of doing that. Um, and I guess I'd be interested in hearing from both Linda and Siobhan about, you know, how you see your skills in that area and, and how you might approach that sort of a situation. Because what you do is keep meetings on the on, on time. I can speak to that. For three years, I was a Democratic County Chair, and, and I ran meetings, monthly meetings. Um, I've done a lot of this type of thing in the past. I think it's very important to give everybody a chance to speak. Inclusion is very important to me uh, during a meeting. I think, I think I was the one that recommended to Janiel that the management have a section in the tra upcoming training about how to run a meeting. I think that's a very important uh, job, but probably not the most important job for the chair. Uh, my response is I've run several of them and we've come in on time or under. I think when David was out for a month, I, I, ran, I ran the uh, meetings for the operations committee. So I think we both had both had experience running meetings. Uh, I think a lot of you have been at the meetings that I was running. Very good. Thank you. Chuck, what's our status? Oh, is Chuck frozen? Starling, Starling. <laughs> oh. I'm going to drop next. It's heading my way. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, it actually, I mean, the storm is out there, so. Yep. Yeah, um, Starlink is absolutely off right now. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, Jeremy was going, um, excuse me, Chuck was going to email us. Uh, Alan, Alan. I mean, I mean, I'm not sure we can even we can even do a a voice vote when our folks are stuck. Um, Hi, everyone. This is Chuck. Um, I am back on this, so I can send around the link uh, if we still have a quorum from the rest of the body. Yes, please, please send that to us, Chuck. We'll be keeping keeping track of the quorum. Uh, Jeremy, Matt, go ahead. I just wanted to, to say that I, I did, did earlier, earlier I miscounted. Um, <clears throat> I think we actually have a couple extra members as a buffer. Um, we One thing that we can do is we can count the number of people that I sent it to and make sure that we get that number of responses as a way to validate <clears throat> the uh, voting results. Well, it looks like you sent it to 14 people, Jeremy, if, I, if I'm doing my counting correctly. That's what I got as well. Okay, as, as long as they're all voting, we're good. Hi, everyone. I have just hit send on the email. Thanks to Starlink. It may take a moment or two before the connection goes through, but it should be arriving in your 
in your email shortly. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. I believe it was actually 13 addresses. Jerry's listed twice. Oh, OK. Am I? Good catch. Thank you. And it's by town, right? It's not by delegates here. It's by town. It's by, it's by governing board members. All of the alternates, their primary members are here. So like David Mannix, John Hosford, um, Jeremy Hansen and Bert and uh, David Went. The primary members for those towns are all present. So I went off of the governing board delegates who are present. Yay, it just came through. All right. Okay, here we go. Um, process suggestion. Um, it might make sense for everybody to raise their hand in teams until they have cast their ballot, um, at which point there should be zero hands remaining up by taking them down. So at the moment, it looks like there are three folks that have not yet submitted their vote. Two folks. Alan, it looks like you're the last one, according to this, that hasn't voted. That's Are funny because I am I uh, the the vote that I got you need essentially to the link. lower your yeah, hand Bill. lower your hand if hand if you voted, voted Alan I did vote okay <laughs> then you can lower your hand unless you want to make a statement now wait a minute this is um. This is like a whole I, forum. I voted. This yeah, is Howard, I have not seen your vote come through, FYI. Okay, hold on a second. <clears throat> I think Alan. it's because Alan replied all instead of clicking the link on the Google form and filling out the Google form, form, form. Yeah, I didn't get the Google form. You're right. Look on the link. Okay, that should go in. Alan's vote is in. All right. Put your hand down, Alan. I will do that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your patience, everybody. I, I really apologize for not having this set up uh, more smoothly. Oh, okay, okay. Is uh, is our clerk counting? Is uh, is Chuck counting? Who's counting? I can't count because Chuck set up the Google form. Okay. Um, you ought to be able to see it yourself in a moment if the internet uh, uh, is, <laughs> is working. But uh, I would like to congratulate Siobhan um, for, 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 for winning the ballot. Well done. Very whoa, good. Whoa. <laughs> okay. I would like to congratulate. Siobhan also. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. OK. All right. Now you can you lose sleep. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, thanks. <laughs> that that no. felt like that, that, that felt like a grandmother's curse, Jerry. I curse you. I curse you. 
No, very um, good. I, I, I don't want to be the process guy times. here. I don't want to be the process guy here, but there is a vacancy in the seat of vice chair. Yes, yes indeed. <laughs> so we're opening the floor to nominations for the seat of vice chair. That's my, That's my take over, right? You yep, can if you want. Doing. Go for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll I'll take it. Well, anybody, yeah, I mean, anybody? Siobhan, your ch your chair, so <laughs> you're running the meeting now. <laughs> it's my meeting now. Um, Artie, right, go ahead. I'm just reminded of Nelson Rockefeller when um, when he was appointed vice president. Oh my Ro God, Ro Agnew. He said they asked him how he felt about it. He said, "I never wanted to be vice president of anything." <laughs> <laughs> anybody who wants to be vice chair. How about you, R.D.? No, good God, not yet. <laughs> I'm still in the middle of budget and flood mitigation. Jeez. <laughs> oh, I think. Um, can we can uh, we sustain a vacancy in the vice in in the vice yeah, chair? chair? Tom Fisher, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was hoping I would not have to throw my hat in. Uh, I will serve if that is at the what the board would prefer. Um, I do have a full time Tom. job and two young children, and it'll be tough. But if that's what the board would like, I'd be happy to serve. Hey, I, I, I nominate Tom Fisher. OK, Ted Barnett. Oh, I was just going to say someone is nominated themselves or thrown their hat in the ring. Um, I was that's great. Um, I have limited time because I'm still at work and it's snowing, so I'd like to get home. Um, okay. But <laughs> since Tom graciously <laughs> put his okay. hat in the ring, then maybe we have an answer to to my particular quandary. Okay. Do Super. we have any more nominations? If, if you need to leave, Ted, we ha we do have enough for a quorum, even if you leave. So. <laughs> Safe, don't stick around here and get in a car accident. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm not seeing any more nominations for the vice chair position. So that means Tom wins. So what you have, would say, you would say, Siobhan, is that you you would instruct the clerk to cast one vote. I instruct for the, the clerk to cast one vote for Tom Fisher for vice chair. Uh, on behalf of the body, you are you are making the assumption that there are no no's or abstentions. Oh, you're right. I'm right. I did. I did. Are there any? No, nope. no. Nope. That's Robert. No. Nope. Oh no. Nope. That's Robert. That's the right procedure. Okay. Because there's only one candidate. You just. Oh right, right, right. I mean, it's not a motion. It's a vote. Okay. If anybody would like to speak up and and you know take the spot from me, because they feel strongly that I should not be vice president, or vice chair, you know. Tom, Tom, the position will be added. up again in May, so so you can, can, can just do a bad job, and then we'll get rid of you in May. That, that's that's my plan. Is to, no, no, I'm just kidding. Run, right. Tom, run. <laughs> so um, away, away, run away. <laughs> okay uh blah 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 that's the end of that's the end of the thing i'm just gonna call us there's no other business the the agenda is done i'm going to press adjourned i move i move we adjourn you have to move <laughs> so, okay Jer all right Jerry. thanks everyone and thanks for uh thanks for serving tom oh david manick you sir, your hand is I, up <laughs> yeah i just want jerry you're still on the finance committee right Yes, yes sir. Jerry is still okay. on the finance committee. Very good. Because <laughs> we're, getting, I would like skinny, to... we're getting kind of skinny on the finance committee. Yeah. I would like to thank Jerry for all the hard work he has Absolutely. done as chair. So, Absolutely. Really, thank you so much, Jerry. Thank you so, so much, Jerry. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Hard, hard shoes to fill. Uh, Janelle. Uh, right. Would My you please? My is dying, so I'm going to hop off. Good night, everyone. Okay. See you later. Uh, and I'm going to stop the recording uh, now. Just one thing I want to get in before, while while Janiel's still on. Could you send the uh, uh, the batch elder scope of work to Siobhan, please?
<clears throat> yes, I will. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's good delegation. And to anyone else on the finance committee, please. And and the uh, uh, the meeting is closed now. It's seven forty-five. I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs>